My name's Brian Chester, I'm the Exhibition Manager for uh, Sunbeam Model Railway Club. This film has been taken at our 35th Annual Exhibition at a new venue, St Anne's Church in Riddle Road, Sunbury. This weekend we're actually displaying our nice brand new layout based on Gisborne of the 70s, where it features the old water tower, railway gates, and as it was back in the day. This particular layout has been a 12 month project for the members. The club has approximately 50 members and about 30 of them are probably active, who all contribute to the layout in one way, shape or form. So we have experts on electronics, track laying, buildings, scenery, painting backdrops. So it's, it's a club event. You can do these at home, but uh, yeah, club makes it nice and easy. Baseboards are made out of ply uh, on a timber frame, steel legs to hold it up obviously, and then foam to contour the scenery, and then a lot of woodland scenics materials we use, grasses and trees and one thing and the other. Ballast is actually fine sifted stone, uh, which then we, we colour that, that to represent uh, the break where the brake blocks. Uh, dropping the dust on the track and where the oil is dripping from the locomotives and everything to make it as realistic as possible. Not yet. A couple of, a couple of little ideas. Get the point. Now this year we, we've got a, a fairly good representation of model trains here, scale model trains from anything from G scale, the big ones for the Garden Railway down to uh, end scale, which are the very tiny ones. Two very good Victorian layouts, or based on Victorian uh, railway practices layouts here. Got a young fellow at the, at the end who, who's built a, a layout of Skipton. Uh, he's still a student and he does a very, very good job. All in all, we've drawn layouts from Bendigo, St Arnold, and places like that. Stall, another one from Stall. So we're here yeah, far and wide, we spread ourselves far and wide, and they come from far and wide to see the show. I've always loved trains for as long as I can remember. I really don't know what it is that appeals to me about them, but I just love them. This is my layout, Skipton. I started building it at the beginning of 2017 because I wanted to take a layout to exhibit at the Caulfield Model Railway Exhibition. I chose Skipton because I didn't have a lot of space, so I had to build something small, I have the space up in the shed at home, so I went through a list of different Victorian branch line stations and Skipton was the one that I chose, which I found had the most interesting stuff available. I started building it in March and I had to have it done by August. I built the baseboards using a mixture of MDF and pine with a layer of cork on top to use as an underlay. I used Pico track for the top, so I had code 83 in the main scenic area and code 100 in the fiddle yard, which has now been swapped out for cassettes because I had issues with the point work. It was mostly done by July when I started doing the scenery, which is a mix of polystyrene sheeting with plaster laid over the top, which then had a layer of foam grass flock with a layer of static grass on the top, and then various mixtures of ballast and trees to finish off the scene. 
I've been going to model rail exhibitions ever since I was a kid and I can remember when I was younger seeing on TV at an exhibition in Canberra an 11 and 12 year old brothers and sisters who'd built a layout and exhibited and I'd always wanted to build my own layout to take to show to people at exhibitions so I thought that I'd do and also to show to younger people that they can do it too because I was 15 when I started building it so I thought well why not go and show all the other younger people in the hobby that it's something that they can do and achieve as well. I got my first set when I was six and I've been modelling the Victorian Railways which is what it's based off for the last four or five years. So I've been slowly collecting and building up things over that time, mostly for the 1940s and 50s but I've got a bit of stuff for later on in the 90s and early 2000s. Most of it's actually kit built from Steam Era Models kits. There's a couple of bits that are ready to run, but most of it's been kit built over the last couple of years. My name is Colin Koenig. I've built Collinsville Riverland Railway Company and it's taken me around about 12 years to build. All totally scratch built. It's based in Australia using Australian prototype but no particular place in Australia. I've taken original photographs from the historical buildings and trains and converted them into a fictitious town and also natural trees. The trees are made out of a plant called sedium and yeah, they've just been painted and uh, yeah, they come up quite good as a gum tree. Most rolling stock been purchased at, uh, or some of it second hand, uh, most of it's new, most of the locos are new. Some logos have been scratch built over end scale bodies. So I've used a number of different things. Try and do it as cheaply as possible, I suppose, to yeah, save money. But yeah, it's just a hobby that we've enjoyed doing over many years. Seriously, probably about uh, 22 years ago, when we formed the club in Stall called the Grampians Model Railroaders, we ended up setting up a club in Stall and was gone from there. Originally I built my first layout called Powell Town, which is now off the road, it doesn't go to any exhibitions anymore. Then extended that and put Jellybrand Gorge on, and those two layouts now are becoming my home layout, and I'm altering them and, and rebuilding them at the present time. And I've also, the latest module I put on that is called Tipacana, which is based in Tasmania. In 1900, it was the busiest port in Tasmania until they built the iron bridge over at Tipacana and the township of Tipacana virtually disappeared completely after the iron bridge was built. So it's a very important part of Tasmania's history, so I've incorporated that in my latest module. Everyone's been very interested in the layout and all the displays here at the exhibition and it's been a great and I think highly successful exhibition. My name's Gavin Shuttleworth. I'm the owner of the HO scale layer town and country. I'm the president of the Bendigo Model Railroaders and, and 
I suppose over the years I used to work for the railways and I've used the club's layer and I thought it was about time I had my own. With that I've designed a layer and what I want to run and I've had certain models for 20, 30 years and I haven't been able to run them so I thought I'd design something so I could run them. Uh, I started off which is with a up and down layer, then other people say, what about your other models? So then it got turned into a fully round one. <laughs> and with that, I sat out to come up with a design on paper of what I needed. Some things were bought, some things were scratch built on the desk for about 12 months. All the houses and stations and tunnels and all that, they were all scratch built from hand. And the next 12 months was the actual build the actual layout and place them all in position. There's a lot of testing. I had a friend who is good with electronics. He came up with an automated system I should have, that way it keep people interested in watching. And he offered for free just to, to see if he could do it, and he's done it. Runs on a computer that controls the, all the suburban system on the layout. Meanwhile, the other half the layer is uh, manually for me and friends who just want to operate it whether digitally or analog. Uh, originally it was going to have trams running around the layout, but there was nowhere to turn them, so they got turned into a little car or a little truck it runs around. It runs around and it gets the, a lot of the kids in, they want to see how it works, and, and a lot of big kids are interested in it as well. They want to know how it works. <laughs> Different parts of the layer are designed on all different parts of the railways and it's based in the 1970s and 80s, hence that's why the, the older suburban fleet are running. The models running at the moment were from kits back in the 80s I think from a retail shop and I built them and I could not run them anywhere, not until I built this layout and a friend talked me into running a shuttle system, which is what it's running at. And then I had to digitise them <laughs> to bring it up to today's world of electronics to actually run them backwards and forwards. And with that, we started building everything and uh, we've enjoyed travelling around with it. I think the furthest we've gone to is Adelaide, which was three months ago. It's gone nearly all parts of Victoria, from uh, Albury to Morwell to Stall, a few places in Melbourne. It's its first showing at Sunbury here at, the, at its new location. The colour of the scenery uh, is based on me travelling to Melbourne in a car and I took a couple of photos out of the window and I thought I like that colour scheme and with that I, I bought the Woodlands uh, Scenic Range which is American product and mixed a blend of colours to get that desired colour and went with that. The main station, the city station in the corner, the track plan is based on Brighton Beach Station in 1921, but the station itself is not based on the station, it's just the track plan. At the other end of the, is my country end. That's not based on any station, but the overheads are based on Riversdale Station, which is on the Glen Waverley line. And the middle station, the overheads are based on the Richmond Station in the 1970s. So I've just taken bits and pieces of all over the system and just have my little part of Victoria, country and city. Everywhere we go, everyone's interested in the layout. The number one question is about the, the car system and how it all works. The whole layout takes about an hour to set up and pack up. It all fits in a six by four trailer. Uh, apart from that, we made a lot of friends at every exhibition we go to along the way and a lot of people interested. I've always had um, helpers that want to come along and give me a hand and they enjoy it as well because they never get to do that side of the aspect of the exhibition. Oh.